Hi, yeah, CJ here. All right, grasshoppers, let us talk about the monk class. Nope, not the wine brewing chanting types, but the ass kicking, wire foo, physics defying action stars of Dungeons and Dragons classes. Monks in DD are extraordinary martial artists who hit fast and hit hard. If you want to learn how to do your kung fu fighting right, then stick past the intro and we will take a closer look at this class. Through their disciplined training regiment and empowered by their mystical energy called Ki, the monk can achieve extraordinary near magical feats. Catching arrows, run on water, do the five point palm exploding heart technique, whatever. Playing the monk is almost like playing a fighting game character with extensive move list. There are class features that let them perform feints, combos, and special moves. Remembering all the features can be difficult for novice players, but if you manage to master them, then your monk will be near invincible. The monk's distinguishing feature is their martial arts. Duh! Which enhances the power of their unarmed attack. Their blinding speed let them break through enemy frontline easily to get to the pesky spellcasters. If you hate enemy mages, then you will love monks, because in my opinion, they are the most effective mage killer class. But to be honest, they don't really discriminate. They are just good at bashing things in general. There are three monk archetypes in the player's handbook, or monastic traditions, as they call it. The way of the open hand is the classical monk type. Think of classic Shaw Brothers Kung Fu or Wuxia movies. It gives them the feature set that lets them knock enemies back, knock them prone, self-healing, instant death attack, etc. It enhances their existing skills and increases their survivability. The way of shadow might as well as be called the way of ninja. It gives the monk many stealth and infiltration features that are also useful in combat. The last monastic tradition is for the Avatar The Last Airbender fans. Using their key, the way of the four element monks can create spell-like effects or bending arts based on earth, fire, water, and wind, increasing their combat capabilities. In general, monks make deadly damage dealers. They can be pretty fragile in combat situations due to their mediocre hit dice size and lack of armor proficiencies. They have features that can boost their defenses at the cost of key points, but once they run out of key, they should think twice before acting recklessly. Out of combat, they make great action heroes with their gravity-defying features, and at higher level, they can understand all languages. Alright, now let's move on to the class basics. The monk's hit dice is 1d8, the average size. Without any modifier bonus or penalties, they start with 8 hit points and gain the average of 5 hit points per level. They have no proficiency with any kind of armor or shield. In fact, the class just abhors them. Their most important features just don't work while wearing armor. Luckily, their unarmored defense feature make up for the lack of armor proficiencies. They have proficiency with all simple weapons plus short swords. And they can choose to have proficiency in one type of artisan's tools like carpenter's tools or one musical instrument like flute. They start with saving throw proficiency in strength and dexterity, so they can more easily resist being forcefully moved and many common harmful effects and spells like fire breaths and lightning bolt spells. At level 14, they will gain all saving throw proficiencies. Like most other classes, they can choose two out of the following array of class skills. At level 1, monks get their signature class feature, martial arts. Martial arts works with the monk's unarmed strikes and monk weapons. They can choose to use dexterity instead of strength for the weapon's attack and damage roll. And they can use their martial arts damage dice, which is d4 at level 1 instead of the normal damage dice. Without martial arts, unarmed strikes only do 1 point of damage. Monk weapons are short swords and any simple melee weapons without the two-handed or heavy property. So simple weapons like great clubs aren't considered as monk weapons. But versatile weapons, like the quarter staves, are. Also, don't make the common mistake of thinking that monk weapons are any weapons your monk is proficient with. The requirement for monk weapons is more restrictive. It may seem pointless to use the martial arts damage dice at level 1, but as the monk gains level, the damage dice size will increase, and if the melee weapon has thrown poverty, they can throw it and still treat it as monk weapon, dealing more damage than it usually would. The best thing about martial arts is that if the monk has made an attack with an unarmed or monk weapon using their attack action, 
they can use their bonus action to make an unarmed strike. Think of it like a combo attack. They can't use it if they haven't attacked on their turn, but at least they can break it up and attack separate creatures. The last thing you need to remember about the martial arts feature is that it doesn't work if the monk is wearing any armor or uses shield. But luckily, they have the unarmored defense feature. The monk's unarmored defense feature is different to the barbarians. The monk uses the following formula to calculate the unarmored defense armor class. 10 plus dexterity modifier plus wisdom modifier. At level 2, monks get the unarmored movement feature. It gives them extra 10 feet to their movement speed while not wearing armor. This bonus will increase as the monk levels up. And at level 9, they can even move along liquid and vertical surface. More importantly, they get access to their key powers. They have as many key points as their monk level, and they can spend their key points on the following key features. Flurry of Blows By spending one key after making their attack action, they can make two unarmed strikes. It doesn't stack with the usual martial arts bonus attack feature, so they can only make a total of three attacks at level 2. At level 5, when they get their extra attack feature, they can make a total of four attacks with Flurry of Blows. Patient Defense Let's the monk take the dodge action using that bonus action at the cost of one key points. As reminder, the dodge action make enemies attack the user with disadvantage and give the user advantage on dexterity saving throws, making them harder to hit. Step of the wind lets the monk take the disengage or dash action using that bonus action, and the jump distance is doubled for the turn. This also costs one key point. They can regain their key points after a short or long rest as long as they spend 30 minutes of the rest time meditating. Some key features at high level may require your target to make saving throws and the monk's key saving throw DC is 8 plus proficiency plus wisdom modifier. At level 3, monks can use their reaction to deflect missiles. Not specifically rocket missiles, but the projectile of ranged weapon attacks made against them. They can reduce the damage they receive by 1d10 plus their dexterity modifier and monk level. If the damage is reduced to 0, they can catch the missile if it is small enough to be held in one hand. Using the same reaction, they can make a ranged attack using the missile with proficiency, counting it as monk weapon with a normal range of 20 feet and long range of 60 feet. At this level, they also get to choose a monastic tradition. For this guide, I will choose the way of the open hand. Open hand monks get the open hand technique, which enhances the power of their flurry of blows. Whenever they hit a target, with one of their flurry of blow attacks, they can impose one of these three additional effects. Make a dexterity saving throw or be knocked prone. Make a strength saving throw or get pushed up to 15 feet away from the monk. Restriction on taking reactions until the end of the monk's next turn. The other two are self-explanatory, but this one can be useful if you want to come in, hit your enemy, and get out without getting opportunity attack. At level 4, monks get their first ability score improvement. And they also get Slow Fall, which lets them reduce falling damage they receive by 5 multiplied by the monk level. At level 5, they get the extra attack feature. They can attack twice using that attack action. And if they were to use Flurry of Blows, they can make a total of 4 attacks. They also get Stunning Strike. Whenever the monk hit another creature with a melee weapon attack, unarmed strikes included, they can spend 1 key point to attempt a Stunning Strike. The target must succeed on a constitution saving throw or be stunned until the end of the monk's next turn. At level 6, monks get key empowered strikes and their unarmed strike count as magical damage for the purpose of overcoming resistance and immunity to non-magical attacks and damage. Open hand monks also get wholeness of body feature, which lets them regain hit points equal to 3 times their monk level using that action. This feature is reusable after a long rest. At level 7, they get evasion. When an effect like the fireball spell or certain traps allows the monk to make a dexterity saving throw to take only half damage, they instead take no damage if they succeed on the saving throw and only half damage if they fail. At this level, they also get stillness of mind. They can use that action to end one effect on themselves that's causing them to be charmed or frightened. Level 8, they get their second ability score improvement. At level 9, their unarmored movement gives them the ability to move along vertical surfaces and across liquids on their turn. It means that if they end their turn on a vertical surface or liquid, they will fall. At level 10, the monk becomes immune to disease and poison due to their purity of body feature. Level 11, open hand monk gain the tranquility feature. At the end of a long rest, they gain the effect of the sanctuary spell that lasts until the start of their next long rest. 
The Sanctuary spell prevents any creature from directly targeting the monk with an attack or harmful spell unless they succeed on their wisdom saving throw. If they fail, they will have to find another target or just not attack or cast the spell. The effect of Sanctuary will end early if the monk attacks or casts a spell on enemy creature. It also doesn't protect the monk from being targeted indirectly with area effects like the Fireball spell. Level 12, the monk get their third ability score improvement. Level 13, they get Tongue of the Sun and Moon. They can understand all spoken languages, and any creature that can understand the language can understand what the monk says. Level 14, the Diamond Soul feature grants the monk proficiency in all saving throws. Additionally, they can spend one key point to re-roll it and take the second result. The wording here means that you can't keep spending your key to re-roll. You can only use this feature once per saving throw. At level 15, they get Timeless Body and suffer none of the frailty of old age. They no longer need food or water and can't be aged magically, though they can still die of old age. Level 16, they get their fourth ability score improvement. Level 17, reaching the epic tier, the monk's martial art damage dice reaches its maximum size. D10, weapons are really optional from this level on. Open hand monks get the quivering palm feature. Whenever they hit a creature with an unarmed strike, they can spend 3 key points to set up lethal vibrations in the creature's body. It lasts for a number of days equal to the monk's level. The vibrations are harmless unless the monk uses their action to end them. As long as the target is on the same plane of existence, it must make a constitution saving throw. If it fails, it is immediately reduced to 0 hit points. Even if it succeeds, it takes 10d10 necrotic damage. Not much of an improvement, is it? Unfortunately, only one creature can be under the effect of this feature at a time, and the monk can choose to end the vibrations harmlessly without using an action. Level 18 monks get Empty Body. They can use that action to spend 4 key points to become invisible for 1 minute. During that time, they are also resistant to all damage but force damage. They can also spend 8 key points to cast the Astral Projection spell without needing material components, but they can't take any other creatures with them. Level 19, they get their 5th and last ability score improvement. Finally, at the maximum level of 20, they get Perfect Self. Whenever they roll for initiative and have no key points remaining, they regain 4 key points. And that's your 20 levels of Monk. Monks have tons of class features, and it can be pretty hard to remember them all. But don't worry about having to remember them all at once, because the features are drip fed to you a few at a time as you level your monk, giving you the opportunity to learn them as you play. In my opinion, the three monastic traditions are roughly equal. They do not drastically change the role of the class. They just add some beneficial extra feature to this already great class. Open hand monks have more survivability due to their self-healing feature and their quivering palm feature can put the fear into some dungeon master's cold dark heart. The shadow monks are great for stealth missions and their damage output is as great as other traditions. The way of the four element monks can reproduce spells using their elemental key. It gives them some utility features and access to area effect spells. But the feature can drain the monk out of their key very quickly. The monk can benefit by multi-classing with various classes. Fighters and rogues are pretty great. Monks can't get full use of all their features because of the stringent requirement of the martial art feature. But the fighter's action surge can be a great feature to have. The rogue and shadow monk goes very well together. Druids and clerics on the other hand can provide quite a few utility with their spells. Conversely, barbarians and druids can benefit from multi-classing with the monk. They can use the larger martial arts damage dice if they decide to fight barehanded. Druids can get quite a survivability boost out of the monk's unarmored defense feature because it uses wisdom instead of constitution. One last thing I would like to say about the monk class is that it is a class that takes time to master, but it is a fun and enjoyable class. You can get as much out of the class as the effort you put into learning it. Anyway, if there is anything here that you don't understand, you can always rewatch the Learn How to Play Dungeons and Dragons series or ask in the comment section. If you like this video, subscribe to the channel and press the bell button for more videos like this. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter to get notified of future releases and a heartful thank you to my patrons at Patreon for helping to make this series possible. If you like my work and want to help the channel out, 
please consider becoming a patron. CJ, over and out.